No, sorry. You're not getting the customary funny lyrics incorporating the word list into a pre-existing song as the funny cold open for my year-end favorite albums list. Not this year. I just don't have the brain power to do that this year. You're lucky you're getting a list at all from me, okay? one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I would really appreciate it. So, uh, here we are at the end of another year. Well, actually, we're a month into the new year, but never mind it. I'm doing what I can, okay? As I explained in my, uh, or as I explained or am about to explain in my other year-end video, I am not sure if I'm uploading this one first or that one first. I probably will upload that one first, so you've already seen it. Anyway, um, I kind of uh, had a heck of a time getting around to filming these videos. Uh, Mother Nature interfered in some ways, and uh, my own lack of enthusiasm and uh, burnout, possibly, um, is the other thing to blame for all this. Uh, anyway... But yes, here it is, and it's it's not nearly the year-end spectacular-ish that it usually usually is, and uh, for reasons I explained in my wrap-up video, but I will also explain here briefly, I just did not pay nearly as much attention to new music in 2023 as I have in years past, and uh, honestly, especially in the last few weeks, uh, the uh, you know since the new year has started, um, it's been kind of refreshing, honestly. <laughs> Uh, just sitting back listening to old music, not having to really think about it, and, uh, you know, th wonder what I'm going to say in the year-end video about it. And, uh, you know, uh, in, in other aspects, too, just sitting listening to old music without anything else to worry about has been amazing therapy lately. Now, I'm not going to be shutting down this YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to keep doing videos, maybe one or two a month, but I am going to probably... I say I'm going to ramp down production and uh, have less content this year, but then I've for the last year or so, I've been doing about one or two videos a month, and that's quite a, kind of what I expect to do from here on out, with the occasional exception, of course. Um, but yeah, I just uh, did not have as much new music uh, stuff in my head, whatever I'm trying to say, uh, to make a whole year-end spectacular-ish. Uh, I already did my bargain bag list, but yeah, I did not have, you know, all the other lists that I usually do, just just wasn't up to doing those. And uh, I'm kind of surprised that this favorite albums list is as long as it is, really. Uh, but I do have a couple of other lists as well this year uh, in this video, so I don't want to uh, make this video too long. But yes, this is my uh, favorite albums of the year video all in all in one video rather than uh, a, a series of videos. But anyway, yes, I will be talking about my favorite reissues of the year. Then I'll go into my favorite holiday album, soundtrack album, and compilation of the year. And then my list of top 20, I believe it is, uh, favorite albums of 2023 plus honorable mentions. So let's go ahead and get started with my two favorite reissues. And I actually featured both of these in a single video. I believe it was my uh, Album Diaries video earlier on this summer. Uh, they are both two of my favorite albums of the 90s, and they both made their vinyl debuts in 2023. And they're both... Well, well, one of them is power pop, the other one's kind of rock, but anyway. Uh, and they are, they're both on vinyl. These are two of the very few new vinyl albums I bought in 2023. Almost everything else was uh, CDs, just because vinyl is so, uh, so expensive. But I had to splurge on these two records, because as I said, they are favorite albums of mine from the 90s. First up, we have Owsley, his self-titled album, uh, a power pop artist by the name of Will Owsley. Uh, unfortunately, he is no longer with us. He passed away in 2011, I believe. Uh, this was his first album. He was a touring guitarist for uh, Amy Grant and several other artists, I believe, as well, uh, until he finally, back in 1999, put out his own uh, his own album, and he put out one one other album a few years later, but that was all we ever got from him. But this album is a doozy. If you like power pop and you have not heard this album, you absolutely must. Uh, I've had it on CD for all these all these years, and will not get rid of the CD because the CD is actually a Japanese edition with a bonus track on it. But yes, nearly every song on this album is just ear candy. But uh, he also has you know. It's ear candy, it's got great hooks, but it's also got great and witty lyrics. 
on it. Uh, I can honestly, I could point at any song on this track list, and it's just great. Uh, if you're looking for a Halloween themed mixtape, when next October comes comes around, Zavalo House, that that one's great. And you know, then oh no, the radio. It's it's a song about music, which uh, you know, as you know, is right up my alley. Uh, I'm all right. It's kind of a post grunge rocker. And uh, some beautiful ballads like uh, Good Old Days and Coming Up Roses. So um, <coughs> just a fantastic, fantastic album. Uh, Owsley, self-titled. Just excellent. Uh, it should be available on streaming services everywhere. Uh, just excellent. And the other favorite reissue of the year, and these are not ranked. Uh, they're, they're basically tied, honestly. They, I couldn't choose one over the other. But this other one is the fifth album, I believe, or maybe seventh album, I can't remember, by one of my favorite bands of all time, The Connells. Uh, this is an album called Ring, and it was uh, it was released in 1993, and this is, as I said, the first time it was ever put out on vinyl was for its uh, 20th anniversary, this, yeah, 30th anniversary, actually. Uh, yes, I can count, uh, back uh, last year. So it's a, an excellent album. The Connells got a lot of comparisons to R.E.M., uh, it was a band I could not get into for years and years and years, but uh, kind of like uh, early REM, like the first half of their of their career. Uh, but yes, as with as, as with Owsley, just one song after another on here is just fantastic. Uh, Slackjawed was one of their uh, uh, more popular singles. Seventy four seventy five was a huge hit single in Europe. Strangely enough, their biggest hit in Europe, and uh, it just. Here in the States, this was pretty much about as close as they came to ever breaking into the charts. They never really did make it big here, which is an absolute shame, because they just put out some great music. Uh, yeah, 74, 75, some really, really witty lyrics on the song Do and You. Uh, to give you an idea, the chorus is, Do and You is like doing time. Yeah, ouch. Um, and so, Spiral is a good song. Hey, <coughs> Excuse me. Hey You is one of my favorite songs on the album. One of my favorite Connell songs. Actually, correction, New Boy. That's the one I was thinking of. New Boy is one of my absolute favorite Connell songs. And then uh, Disappointed is a fantastic ballad. So as you can see, I am naming practically the entire track list of Ring by the Connells. Another album you really, really should try out, especially if you like uh, Jangle Rock. As, uh, as I mentioned, kind of like R.E.M.'s first four or five albums-ish, uh, right around there. But yes, fantastic album, and uh, my other of my two favorite reissues of 2023. And uh, let's see, now let's go on to uh, my favorite, uh, I call them fringe albums, but that's kind of uh, not giving them, uh, it, it's kind of a, a backhanded compliment, I guess you'd say. Because I really like these genres. Um, <clears throat> holiday music, soundtracks, and Compilation, I guess compilation isn't really a genre, but anyway. My favorite holiday album, and yes, last year I did uh, like a winner and a runner-up, I think, of each of these categories, but this year it's just uh, just naming one album per category. My favorite holiday album of the year is We Wish You the Merriest by Seth MacFarlane and Liz Gillies. Um, Seth MacFarlane is, is one of those artists who, any year that he puts out an album, it's going to be on my favorites list somewhere, because I just absolutely love his voice. It's just so smooth. It's in a way, it's, it's almost smoother than Sinatra, but he is really like those those classic crooners like Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, and those guys. And uh, the only way you could make Seth MacFarlane's voice better is if you paired him with a female vocalist, because I, I I personally love the um, the combination, the sound of male female duets, and this one is full of them, obviously. But yes, uh, mostly uh, or it might be all uh, classic holiday songs. Uh, Frosty the Snowman. Oh, actually, track one, I think, is an original. Happy Holiday is the name of that one. But yes, Winter Wonderland, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, Holly Jolly Christmas. So yes, the, all of the staples are on here and a couple of new tracks as well. And uh, as with all Seth MacFarlane albums, uh, quality and fantastic vocals are what you're going to get. And Liz Gillies holds her own with uh, an, outstand, an equally outstanding voice as, of, uh, as Seth's, uh, with that beautiful, beautiful sound of male-female uh, harmony. is just That's just unbeatable. Now, my favorite uh, soundtrack, <clears throat> it also comes with a rant. And uh, this guy, kind of like Seth MacFarlane, if this guy puts out a soundtrack 
in any given year, it's probably going to be my favorite soundtrack of the year. And we're talking John Williams with, uh, in this case, his score to Indiana Jones at the Dial of Destiny. You know, hey, it's an Indiana Jones soundtrack by John Williams. Need, need I say more? It's just fantastic. Probably not as good as oh, the first three soundtracks, which are all-time favorites of mine. But still, uh, it, it, it's John Williams, and he does his absolute best on here. Uh, so that's the re one reason why he is the king, the reigning king of the film score. But uh, here's my rant. Uh, this was put out by Disney Music Emporium, and uh, when pre-orders came up online for it, uh, I ignored them because I figured, hey, it's a John Williams soundtrack to an Indiana Jones movie. It's going to be available in stores, right? Apparently not. Uh, after the first pre-orders uh, came and went, and it was sold out, you know, the pre-orders were uh, sold out, I found out that it was, no, it was only being released online uh, in a limited edition. And I cannot put into words how stupid that is. Disney Music Empor Emporium completely botched the release of the soundtrack from this movie. It should never have been a limited edition. It should have been put out in the stores. People would buy it. And, you know, it's and just the fact that they made it a limited edition is even more aggravating because if it's a limited edition, people are going to buy it who don't care about the music. They just want to buy it and flip it for 10 times the price, which they're doing now on eBay. Look this up on eBay. The prices are absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so, so that makes it even more harder, more hard to get for those of us who want the CD for ourselves and love the music. So, Disney, you are my nemesis right now. I absolutely... I mean, I thought the movie was good. I actually thought it was a little bit better than uh, Crystal Skull. But uh, still, you know, these guys just completely botched the release of this. And uh, I'm going to stop my rant there because I could keep going on and on. But, uh, yeah, making it a limited edition, uh, artificially, you know, I guess that's the word, artificially increases demand for it because of the damn flippers. And, you know, so that makes it even harder for those of us to get, as I just said. But yes, as you can see here, I did finally, uh, they had two or three more rounds of pre-orders that came up on the website. And fortunately, I got word of it just as it came back up for pre-order. And I was able to get mine for list price, $15.99 plus shipping, 20 bucks altogether. So uh, yes, I did not have to pay four to $500 like some people are listing it for on eBay. I'm not kidding. Look it up. But uh, yes, rant over, because as I said, I could keep going on and on about that. But yes, uh, my favorite soundtrack of 2023 is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny by John Williams. My favorite compilation of the year. Uh, it almost became a well repeat of last year, because last year my favorite one was uh, Now That's What I Call Pride by the, the now... It's not a label, it's, it's, it's a series. But uh, I decided this one is... Uh, it's better. It has more stuff on it that I really enjoy. And it is, now that's what I call Music 25th Anniversary, Volume 1. Yes, I saw this. I actually didn't even know it was out until I saw it in the stores. And on the track listing, it just had one song after another that I really enjoyed and originally bought the CDs that they were on, but those, that was like the only song on the CD that I enjoyed. And we're talking uh, Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake from the Trolls soundtrack, um, Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars and Mark Ronson. I love that song. And it's got several other things. Oh, Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. I liked the album at first, but it cooled on me really, really fast. And uh, that was the only song that I really, really loved on there. So, And it's got a bunch of other cool stuff on here. Uh, some stuff I've already got. But, uh, you know, uh, Hollaback Girl by Gwen Stefani. That's got, it's always, it's a fun, cheesy song, I think. And uh, then some uh, excellent stuff from years past, like Fix You by Coldplay, one of my favorite ballads of all time. Uh, Story of My Life by One Direction. So, although I kind of wish that they'd put um, best song ever, because that's that's one of their best songs ever. <laughs> anyway, so yes, my favorite compilation of 2023 is Now That's What I Call Music, 25th Anniversary, Volume 1. So, a uh, quick water break here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we go, to, go into the top 20 plus five honorable mentions of my favorite albums of 2023, favorite studio albums. And yes, that was another thing I didn't have this year was a favorite live album. I just didn't buy any live albums this year. But uh, yes, here we go with the... Uh, oh yes, a little disclaimers. I forgot to keep the notes uh, that I was going to read off of. But uh, 
Yes, uh, as I mentioned, I did not pay nearly the attention to new music this year that I did uh, in years past. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to have to say about a lot of these albums, probably not a whole lot. And I also didn't spend as much time with a lot of these albums as I thought I would, or as, as I'd hoped to. So uh, yes, the positions on this list is going to be a lot more arbitrary than it usually is. And the positions of the uh, these albums, the rankings that they are in this list, doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you know, the lower-ranked ones are worse than uh, the upper-ranked ones or not. It's just, it just represents how much, to this point, each of the albums has connected with me. So, be that as it may, uh, take with that what you will. And yes, there's going to be a hot take or two on this list, and I will explain as I get to them. But yes, my five honorable mentions uh, in alphabetical order by artist. Uh, volume 1 by Chris Boaty. He is a jazz trumpetist. And I actually found out uh, just a couple of years ago, um, a few of his albums were in my sister's collection. I inherited them from him, so she really liked him. And I didn't find out, uh, and I've bought a couple others since then, and I didn't find out until last year, early last year, that he is an Oregonian. He was born and raised in Oregon. And uh, so cool, uh, you know, all the more reason for me to like him. You know, he's he's a, a fellow statesman. I don't know if that's the right word, but anyway... Uh, volume one here. This is like this is not his first album, by the way. This is like his twelfth or thirteenth album. But uh, volume, he just called it volume one as kind of a kind of a reboot, reboot if you will, to his uh, record contract. He's on a new label, so that's one reason why. But uh, yes, a bunch of um, or a handful of uh, Great American Songbook standards, as well as a couple of um, uh, recent uh, popular songs. Like he does a cover of "Fix You" by Coldplay. Interesting that that was also on. Uh, and there's another song on here that he's done that's a uh, you know a, a rock or pop song that he covers, but I can't remember what it was. But he also does uh, "Someday My Prince Will Come," which was uh, made famous by Miles Davis, uh, "Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered," and uh, Two for the Road." He does a cover of "Danny Boy," the classic Irish folk song. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, Chris, I didn't mean to drop you. Uh, yeah. A very, very nice little uh, mellow listening uh, experience with Volume 1 by Chris Bodine. Uh Next up in my honorable mentions, uh, The Album by Jonas Brothers. Yeah, uh, this was kind of a divisive album, or at least, you know, uh, some people didn't like it as much. I actually kind of liked it. Uh, not as much, not, or not enough to rank it, but uh, still, some fun songs on here. Uh, I like how they dealt a little bit into the Americana type of thing with uh, a song called Americana. That's one. And Montana Sky and one or two other songs. And of course, Waffle House is uh, kind of one of those guilty pleasure, or for me, not so guilty pleasure songs. Uh, there was another one that I thought was pretty good here. I cannot remember what it was, though. And that's going to be a theme with this video is I can't remember which songs on a lot of these albums I really enjoyed because didn't spend enough time with them uh, as, as I'd hoped I, hoped I would have. Uh, the next up in my honorable mentions is, it's actually another covers album, it is High Drama by Adam Lambert, uh, American Idol runner-up. Yeah, he was runner-up, I think, for his year. But uh, yes, uh, some of his favorite songs, pop and rock songs from the last 25, 30 years. Uh, Holding Out for a Hero, the Bonnie Tyler song, he covers that one. As I spit on the back of the cover of the CD. That's disgusting, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Ordinary World by Duran Duran. And uh, I Can't Stand the Rain. Uh, he does um, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me, the the uh, Culture Club cover. And uh, so, yeah, lots of great cover songs on here. I'll show you the track listing there. So, uh, yeah, very decent album. And, uh, yeah, I, I kind of wish I had remained as much a fan of Adam Lambert's music um, throughout his career thus far as I had been at the beginning. Not sure why he kind of cooled on me a bit. But anyway, uh, next up. In my runners runners up, yeah, not runner ups, runners up, is Rockstar by Dolly Parton. Uh, yes, two discs full of uh, mostly. She, yeah, she does two original songs, but all the rest of them are covers of rock songs. Uh, she just decided to try something new, and in some ways, you just have to admire uh, the fact that she decided to give this a shot. Um, you know, even though some of the songs work, some of them don't. But, um, you know, I mean, some of them, she is just an absolute, just, they just sound absolutely natural for her. 
Uh, there were a couple of others that are that were kind of weird sounding, I have to admit. I uh, cannot remember specifically because we're talking 30 songs here. It's two discs packed with songs and an amazing array of guest artists on here. You name them, they're on here pretty much. So, uh, yeah, she's still at it. She's still got her voice. Uh, you know, it, it's I mean, it, it's 95 percent of what it was uh, in the old days. So, yeah, she's still kicking and uh, you got to admire her for that as well. Uh, next up on my runners-up, or excuse me, honorable mentions, sorry. And I probably said runners-up several times, but honorable mentions is what I'm at now. Uh, Chris Black Changed My Life by Portugal the Man. I had never tried Portugal the Man before until this album, and I heard a song of theirs on the radio. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was Dummy, and uh, kind of like the song of it. it. It sounded a little cheesy at first, but I, it, I, I grew to like it. And uh, the rest of the album is pretty darn good, I have to say. And uh, it hasn't yet compelled me to delve more into their discography uh, in the past, but uh, I may, I may yet do that. So uh, yes, and actually, this was this was actually the last of the honorable mentions. Yes, honorable mentions, not runners up. Uh, the runner up is coming when I get to number two. So anyway, that is the honorable mentions, and let's go ahead and. Step into the ranked list with number 20 on my list is... <laughs> that's where my brain at is. I cannot remember some of the titles of these, al of these albums. Something to Give Each Other by Troy Sivan. And, uh, you know, like with several of these albums on here, I should have enjoyed this one a lot more than I did. I just uh, couldn't get myself into really listening to new music this year as mu nearly as much as I uh, have in previous years, as I mentioned. But yes, uh, and a reason I should have liked this album was it's got more upbeat songs than it has ballads, and uh, that's usually usually a uh, selling point for me, as uh, if you will. But yes, uh, his voice is just as good as it always as it's always been. Uh, songs, good hooks in the songs. Uh, just uh, maybe over the course of the uh, 2024, if I listen to it a bit more, it will maybe grow on me a little more. So. Uh, number 19, and uh, again, uh, same thing as with Troy, just I'm kind of surprised it didn't grow on me as much as I thought it would. Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. Uh, the exception, though, is uh, Get Him Back is one of my, was one of my, one of my favorite songs of the year, uh, partly because of that, that double meaning in the lyrics, you know, does she want to get him back or does she want to get him back? You know, clever Olivia, gotta say, you know. <laughs> Clever, if you ask me, anyway. You know, with my uh, my bar is usually set pretty low. Let's just, let's face it. Um, All American bitch. That was that was that was a pretty good song. And oh, there was one or two others that I kind of liked. Oh, pretty isn't pretty. That was a very good song as well. So yes, uh, good stuff. And she, you know, she's got she's got the voice. She's got the talent. It's just I wasn't able to connect with it as much as I wanted to. Uh, so that's, that's as I said, it's going to be a recurring theme through this video. Number 18 on my list this year is King of a Land by Yusuf, formerly known as Cat Stevens. Uh, the one thing I didn't care much for about this album is uh, he rather liberally laid on the uh, the references to religion. Religious music is not my thing, so uh, that, that kind of lost me a little bit. Uh, but the songs are just so wistful and kind of... Uh, what, what am I trying to say? You know, just kind of, it's just kind of a feel-good album. Uh, you know, simple, direct, to-the-point songs. Kind of like, it, it, in the sound, not necessarily in the lyrical content, but in the sound, it kind of takes on the attitude of, a, of an album for children. And that's, I, I kind of like that. It was a refreshing thing. With all the stuff going on in the world today, you need stuff to just, you know, to mellow out to. to the stuff that makes you feel kind of like a kid again you know, emotionally, if not mentally. That's what this album basically provides. Um, again, pretty much every song on here uh, is, is, it was good. It's, I mean, it's number 18 on my list. So yeah, very, very good album. Give it a shot if you haven't yet. Even if you are not a, much of a fan of religious music, you can kind of forgive the, uh, the religious references and lyrics. It's very good. Number 17. And in a way, this is kind of cheating because I actually did not pick this album up or listen to it until after January 1st. So in a way, it shouldn't be on this list, but uh, it was actually in the favorite albums of the year list for my two closest friends, my two closest YouTube friends, 
and neither of them are particularly fond of country music. So I figured, okay, I've got to check this out. I'm at least a little fond of country. So I had to check out Hire by Chris Stapleton. This is my number 17. And, you know, I'll be darned if they didn't, uh, if there wasn't something to their uh, decisions on that. And one thing I really enjoy about this album, I honestly cannot remember any of the songs specifically. Oh, South Dakota. That was a pretty good one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the album, and that's one thing with, um, oh, what was his name? Uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, he was on my favorite list. Oh, Orville Peck. That's right. Uh, from last year or the year before. Uh, one thing with Orville Peck that I found also in Chris Stapleton's album, at least this one, is the entire album has like an atmosphere to it. It's not just a collection of songs. It's, you know, it's just got a feel that goes consistent through the album. And it's, you, feel like, you feel like you're really listening to an album. As if the songs are all tied together. It's not a concept album. It's just the kind of the mood and the atmosphere of the album just carries all the way through and makes it for an interesting listening experience. So uh, I hope to uh, warm up warm up more to this one over the coming year. It's very, very good. Hire by Chris Stapleton. Number 16 was an album that I just kind of saw on the list and actually bought on a whim. Uh, I've got one, yeah, just one of his albums, one of his earliest albums with his band. Uh, and this is a solo album that he just put out last year, obviously. Uh, it is What Matters Most by Ben Folds. That was my phone that you heard dinging, sorry. Yes, What Matters Most by Ben Folds. Excellent album. And this one is um, this one is a grower. It, it's not one of those albums that, like, you know, hits you from the first listen. You have to listen to it a few times to get into it and uh, to, to really appreciate it. And uh, that's, yeah, that's how it uh, it had its effect on me that way. It's uh, an excellent album. Extreme. I mean, you know, most of us know about Ben Folds, extremely talented singer and songwriter and uh, musician. Uh, he's he's been at it for 25, 30 years almost. Uh, so yeah, he's he's just still at it uh, with his game on this one. Uh, Clouds with Ellipses is a, a great song. My favorite song on the album, I think, is Christine from the Seventh Grade. Uh, that one details he he uh, befriends, uh, reconnects with a friend from. Uh, middle school from seventh grade, and uh, she happens to have, uh, you know, he was, I guess, fond of her back then, but she happens to have, in the intervening years, she's gone down a certain uh, sociopolitical rabbit hole, and I won't say which, you know, which side of the rabbit hole or which rabbit hole particularly, just to make this, you know, uh, 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 to make it a neutral thing, kind of like the song is, I, I think. I don't know, there might be specific references in the lyrics, but anyway, Christine from the seventh grade is a very, very good song, and uh, probably one that a lot of people can relate to, especially in the last six or seven years with people that they uh, hadn't reconnected with in a while. Uh, and the song Happy Clapper, that's kind of like a satire, I guess, in a way. Uh, it's kind of like just saying, what's wrong with happy songs that have claps in them? That, you know, that have the hand claps in the chorus. And that, that's, a, uh, that's a question that I take to heart. What's wrong with, fun, with happy music? But yes. Very good album. Uh, what Matters Most by Ben Folds is my number 16 favorite album of the year. Number 15. And uh, this one, I almost didn't put this on the list, but I re-listened to it. And uh, it's more uh, for the, how do I want to say this, the sentimental value or the, the personal value that the band's earlier work has to me uh, than it is about the content of this album itself, if, if I'm making sense. Uh, I hadn't listened to this band's, uh, any album by this band in 15, almost 20 years. Uh, yeah, almost 20 years. And uh, then I decided to pick this one up and listen to it because they put out a new album in 2023, and I rather enjoyed it. And it brought my memories back to those earlier albums. I'm talking about Matchbox 20 with their album Where the Light Goes. Honestly, they still have the... Uh, you know, the songwriting and musicianship and lyrics, uh, it's nowhere near as good as their first three albums, which are the only other three that I own. I haven't bought, they have, they've put out one or two albums between this one and the last one that I have, uh, that I have not listened to yet. But, uh, still, I, re I rather, rather enjoy this one. And it, as I said, it brought me back to, uh, Matchbox 20's first three albums, which, uh, I had gotten rid of, but re uh, reconnected with when I inherited them from my sister, and yes, uh, the fact that my sister was a big fan of theirs uh, 
uh, is all the more meaningful to me, re reconnecting me with this band. So uh, the video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to try and speed up here. I am surprised I've gotten I've gone this long talking about this stuff. But uh, uh, yes, Where the Light Goes by Matchbox 20, my number 15. My number 14, uh, this is the first year, I think, that a Fueled by Ramen artist has made it to my year-end list. We're talking all-time low with the album Tell Me I'm Alive. Yes, and again, this is a, another album that I heard a single fr on the radio from, and that almost never happens. I never listen to the radio deliberately. I just listen to it incidentally uh, when I'm riding in the car with my brother or whatever. But uh, the song... Which song is it? Um, Calm Down. I heard on the radio a couple of times. Rather enjoyed it. I, I really liked it, and uh, so I picked this album up and gave it a try. And there's another song on here that I really, really enjoy. It is... Ah, the Sound of Letting Go. That's got a great, great hook to it. And, uh, yeah, I usually, fueled by ramen artists, don't interest me at all because I kind of uh, have the apparently misguided uh, notion that they all sound the same. But, uh, yes, these guys are making me want to. I haven't yet, but making me want to delve into their earlier albums. So, yes, and I'm going to do that. So, uh, yeah, All Time Low is my number 14. Who'd have thunk it? A fueled by ramen artist. Uh, number 13. And uh, this is yet another artist that I should have connected with his album more than I did. It is Chemistry by Kelly Clarkson, my number 13 favorite. And uh, uh, again, kind of like with Matchbox 20, I love this one not as much for the uh, music or lyrical content as for her voice. Kelly Clarkson is an absolute slayer in the vocal department. She absolutely kills. Uh, it's a reason why she is uh, she was number one the first year of American Idol, and she has maintained her career all these years later, 20-plus years later. She's still going strong. She's still a kick-ass vocalist. And even the songs are even pretty good, too. And, oh, a couple of cool things about this album. A couple of guest uh, appearances she has, Steve Martin and Sheila E. in two, in two of the songs. I mean, just talk about left-field artists to bring in for uh, guest appearances. But, yes, uh, Steve Martin is, for those of you who might not know, he is... Uh, pretty darn good banjo player, and so she brings him in to play banjo on the song uh, I Hate Love. A very cynical song. Yes, who'd have thunk it? And, uh, but yes, uh, there are some really good songs on here. Mine is one that's really, really good, really, really good. and uh, Down to You is another excellent one. Favorite Kind of High, I rather enjoy that one. So, yeah. A very good album. Not strong enough to be in my top ten, at least not in terms of how I connected with it this year. Again, uh, but yes, still very, very good. My number 12 favorite album of 2023 is Orpheus Descending by John Mellencamp. Uh, obviously, when, as soon as I heard about the song The Eyes of Portland, the lead-off single, uh, you know, when it's, a, it's a mention of Portland, I have had to listen to it. Um, a lot of critics, and especially a lot of uh, Oregonians and Portlanders, did not like that song because they thought that he uh, was trash-talking Portland. But no, he was just using Portland as the... Uh, what do you call it? I had the, the word in my head, uh, but uh, just the, the, the case study, I guess, of homelessness in urban America. Uh, it's just, you know, and Portland got a lot of headlines, for better or worse, because of its homeless problem, which which is beginning to uh, turn around, I must say. But uh, yes, that, that for those reasons, the song got a lot of flack, but it has a really good point, as do several of the songs on here. Uh, the lyrical content was kind of straightforward and in that in that way, you know, not particularly imaginative or inventive, but it gets the point across, I guess. You know, um, the song Hey God, which was the lead-off uh, lead song on here, is very good. Um, Lightning and Luck, that was another good song. Um, his voice is not the kind of voice that I usually go for. It's gotten really gla gravelly and weathered, uh, kind of like Bob Dylan. Uh, have trouble listening to Bob Dylan now after listening to his earlier stuff. Uh, same thing with uh, John Mellencamp. But still, a very good album uh, with a lot of uh, meaningful songs on it. Uh, so yeah, very good stuff if you have not listened to it. And uh, moving on to a little bit of uh, fluff, uh, after those these weighty albums here, yes, um, uh, Kelly Clarkson's album Chemistry was kind of a, a breakup or divorce album, so that kind of had some weight in the lyrics. And then Mellencamp. Uh, but let's switch to a little fun. We have... Uh, Yacht on the Rocks by Straight No Chaser. Uh, this is the uh, acapella band. Uh, this is their eighth or ninth album, I think. 
And uh, yes, as the title suggests, this is, uh, centers on covers of 60s, 70s, and 80s pop rock songs. Uh, some of them, most of them classified in the yacht rock category, but not quite all of them. They do a Toto medley uh, featuring David Page, uh, who I guess was, in, was uh, uh, involved in Toto for a while. And uh, they do, uh, let's see, a song. I think it's called uh, Biggest Part of Me, I think is a Chicago song, or maybe it was a Peter Cetera song. Uh, Sailing by Christopher Cross, uh, What a Fool Believes by the Doobie Brothers, Lovely Day by Bill Withers, and extra points on this album, oh, uh, Lido Shuffle, the Boz Skaggs song, which I really enjoy. But yes, the the big uh, bonus point scorer for me for this album is they do a cover of Easy Lover, which is a song by Phil Collins and Philip Bailey, one of my favorite songs of the 80s. Fantastic song. Um, there's another group of uh, Scandinavian musicians who had a live concert album, and they did a cover of that song on there. Loved that version of it. I would love probably any version of the song that I would hear, including Straight No Chaser uh, with the song Easy Lover. Check that one out. But yes, this was just a fun, fun album. Uh, fun medleys in some of the songs. And uh, oh, they start out with Escape, the Pina Colada song. So how can you go wrong with that, right? Anyway, it's not one of my favorite songs. Anyway. So yes, still lots and lots and lots of fun. Yacht on the Rocks by Straight No Chaser. Now, drink please. Mm. Throat's getting a little dry from uh, talking so much. Now we're in the top ten. My number ten favorite album is By the Struts. It is called Pretty, Pretty Vicious. And uh, yes, The Struts, this is their fourth album. And I've followed them uh, basically since album number two. Picked that one up. Really enjoyed it, so I picked up album number one and stayed with stayed with them for album num album number three, which was a little bit laid back, you know, a little more laid back. But on this album, they kind of bring back some of the raucous uh, early Rolling Stones, well, or mid period Rolling Stones and Queen, a little bit of Queen in there, a uh, little, little bit of raucousness in the lyrics and, and the uh, vocals and stuff. Uh, but yes, uh, too good at ra too good at raising hell is the lead off single the and the first track on here. Uh, let's see. A rock star is another good song. Uh, Bad decisions, another one was really good, and I uh, can't remember any of the other ones. But yes, if you want a, a good time and want to listen to some uh, a song, an, an album, or a rock uh, band that uh, cites Queen as one of their big influences, and uh, yeah, yeah, give them a try. The Struts with their album Pretty Vicious, very good, very good album. Number nine, uh, we have. Endless Summer Vacation by Miley Cyrus. Uh, yes, this one's... Uh, yeah, this one actually connected with me more than I thought it would. But uh, yes, uh, Flowers, it was, of course, is a great song, one of the singles. Um, she brings uh, Brandy Carlisle on for a song called Thousand Miles. Uh, you is one of the greatest ballads of the year, in my opinion. Uh, just excellent ballad. And uh, yeah, plenty of other good songs on here as well. Uh, I got into Miley Cyrus with... Was it her last album? No, uh, the one before that. Uh, Younger, I think is what it was called. And then I picked up uh, Paper Hearts. Was that her previous album? Uh, the one before this one? And then I went back to, uh, and I found Bangers for a uh, good price at uh, used at a store and enjoy, enjoyed that one more than I thought I would. And uh, this one. So yes, this is the fourth Miley Cyrus album that I own. Uh, she is an excellent artist, uh, far better than I... Uh, than I had assumed that she was before I actually started listening to her. So I know you never know how good somebody is until you give them a shot. Now, number eight on my list. And uh, in a way, I'm kind of surprised this one is so low in the countdown, but uh, it's only there because I wasn't able to connect with it as much as I had wanted to, as much as I connected with other stuff, obviously. But here we are by Foo Fighters. <laughs> took, took me a second, sorry. But uh, yes, obviously Under You was a fantastic song. The title track is excellent. Uh, and yeah, Rescued and a bunch of other songs on here as well. Uh, their first album without Taylor Hawkins and uh, some yes, yeah, some uh, heart-wrenching lyrics in the album. Uh, but yeah, it's just as rocking as Foo Fighters have ever been. Uh, it's just, I yeah, just did not spend as much time, despite the fact that this one has been out for almost an entire year now. Uh, just wasn't able to connect with it as much as I'd wanted to, but still excellent. Now, <clears throat> number seven. Lucky number seven. This one's going to be a hot take. 
and I'm going to, this video is getting long, so I don't want to go too far off on a tangent, but I'm going to address why this album is number seven. It is The Maybe Man by AJR. Hear me out. Uh, a lot of uh, YouTubers despise this album. They despise AJR in general. I don't know why. And partly because I, I am not one to jump on bandwagons. And yes, I think AJR hate is a bandwagon. Uh, but let me explain here. Um, a lot of people hate this album and AJR because of the stream of consciousness and uh, arguably juvenile or uh, childish lyrics. But hey, when I listened to this album, I was thinking, okay, sometimes when I just need to stop and daydream for a while, some of the same type of stuff runs through my head. And if it doesn't run through your head, you are lying. Uh, you're lying. You like to think that you're all, you know, you're you've got a lofty mind and you you think profound thoughts and everything. But every once in a while, childish crap runs through your head, and you know, putting this stuff into lyric into songs into lyrics. What's wrong with that? Every type of music has its place in the world. You don't have to like this stuff. I do. I, I you know, I love songs that are profound and lyrical, mean, lyrically meaningful and have real substance to them. I also like this stuff that I can just unlock my mind and just listen to and, you know, dream away at. And, and also some of the lyrics, you might laugh at this, but some of the lyrics have more profound um, ideas behind them than the lyrics imply. I, I'm just going to leave you with that. Some music speaks to you on... A deep level, and you don't know why. You don't know why you love the music you love. You don't know why you hate the music you hate. And that goes along. And if ever there was a year where that was a theme with me, it's 2023. So, uh, yes, uh, AJR, The Maybe Man, is my number seven album of the year. Deal with it. And, uh, you know, if you want to have a discussion, let's have a discussion about it. I, I thought about doing a video series, a recurring feature called In Defense Of. And AJR would be one of those artists, but I think I just basically, basically covered that here in this video. So anyway, moving on. My number six favorite album. Yes, moving from AJR on to Sparks. This was my first uh, experience with the band Sparks. They've been around for, what, 50 years? This is The Girl Is Crying In Her Latte. And yes, I just kept hearing so many good things about this album, I decided to give it a shot. And, uh, yeah, a shot. Uh, no pun intended with the... Uh, coffee-related drink here. But uh, yes, Veronica Lake is uh, was one of the singles on here, and it's one of my favorite songs of the year. And I actually learned something about Veronica Lake in her historical context that I didn't know about until I listened to this song. So when you learn something about the world by listening to an album, that makes it a little bit better, in my opinion. But uh, yes, I cannot remember what some of the other... really Oh, We Go Dancing. You talk about a biting satire of North Korea, listen to you go dancing. Or, or, or we go dancing, sorry. Uh, so yes, that was, uh, that's an, another excellent, excellent song on there. So uh, yeah, a very, very good album, an excellent album by Sparks. And uh, this, if I have anything to say about it, it will not be my first Sparks album. I intend to start digging into their discography, uh, hopefully starting this year. Number five in my list, we're at the top five, and again, maybe this one should be higher, maybe not, but it is Hackney Diamonds by the Rolling Stones. Uh, I never imagined they would have been uh, this put out this good an album this late into their career, but it was excellent. And uh, yes, to have... Uh, who was the drummer? Ronnie Wood. Uh, for this to be the last album he worked on, he went out on a high note. Uh, and yes, just excellent album. And for those of you who refuse to listen to it just because Lady Gaga is on one song... Get over yourselves and listen to it. She only does background vocals, okay, and just in part of the song. It's not a duet, so just deal with it. An excellent song, by the way, uh, Sweet Sounds of Heaven. And, of course, Angry, the lead-off single, is great. Uh, Bite My Head Off is good. Um, pretty much all the songs on here are just great. And, uh, yeah, and this was actually the first uh, Rolling Stones album I bought as a new release. I bought one or two albums of theirs previously, but uh, just just haven't been able to really get into the band. I've got their 40 Licks uh, Greatest Hits album, but otherwise this was the only other one that I had. So it's 
excellent stuff. Number four, uh, yes, this, this video will be less than an hour long, I hope. Number four on my list, and this one really kind of surprised me because I kind of dropped off on this artist in the last couple of years, but uh, Rufus Wainwright with the album Folkocracy, and it's got uh, gold foil, you can kind of see here, very cool cover. Uh, but yes, this is a uh, covers album of uh, folk songs, classic folk and pop songs, and he actually redoes at least one of his own songs on here. A huge bunch of guest artists on here. Uh, he does the uh, Mamas and the Papas song, 1230 Young Girls Are Coming to the Canyon, featuring Susanna Hoffs, Chris Stills, and Cheryl Crow. And they do a fantastic uh, recreation of the Mamas and the Papas four-part harmony. Beautiful, beautiful rendition of that song. And... Uh, he does a, a version of Cotton Eye Joe, the classic folk song, with Shaka Khan on it. As well as, oh, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, one of his own songs, Going to a Town, he reworks and has Anoni from Anoni and the Johnsons on here. Uh, Hush Little Baby, the uh, lullaby, classic lullaby for ch children. He does, uh, with it's a family thing with uh, Martha Wainwright and Lucy Wainwright Roche, his sisters. So yes, a fantastic album. I really, really enjoyed it. And... Uh, Extra points to the uh, design of the uh, album art. I, I, I love it when artists just kind of go go to town with making a unique looking track listing on the album uh, jacket. So yes, excellent, excellent album. And uh, yes, I'm not sure if I'll get back into Rufus Wainwright as much as I used to be. He just kind of cooled on me and I got rid of the last one or two albums of his. Uh, yeah, they just uh, kind of cooled on me. But anyway, excellent folk album, covers album by Rufus Wainwright. Number three on my list, and this one uh, was originally quite a bit lower. I think it was even out of the top ten, but I re-listened to it recently, and it just shot back up the charts, back into the top three. The Show by Niall Horan. Uh, not quite as good as his first two albums, even though I might have ranked one or both of them lower than this one, but uh, yes, uh, from some great songs, but I am not able to remember specifically which one. Oh, You Could Start a Cult. Of course, that was a good one. Uh, kind of has a little bit of a uh, uh, interest, uh, double meaning, maybe, or uh, subliminal, I guess, meaning in recent uh, years, uh, sociopolitically speaking. Anyway, uh, as I recall, Heaven and If You Leave Me were pretty good. Uh, Never Grow Up, I think that was a really good song, one that I really enjoyed. But uh, yes, he's still got his, uh, I mean, he's still an excellent songwriter and uh, vocalist and instrumentalist. Uh, his previous two albums, I think, were a little bit stronger, but still, this one was way up there. And it's because it's way up there in my countdown also. My runner-up. Now I can use the phrase runner-up. For some reason, I use the phrase runner-up when I mean honorable mentions. Anyway, my runner-up album of the year is by a Canadian group of whom I've been a fan for 25, almost 30 years now, Bare Naked Ladies, with their album In Flight, an excellent album. And as I got a lot of uh, teasing for in a uh, recent chat with my two friends, uh, the songs 50 for a While and Too Old are two songs about uh, about growing older, and I, I'm really connected with those songs, obviously. See the gray hair here? Um, and But uh, let's see. Clearly Lost is another outstanding song on this album. I, I love, they still have got, uh, I don't love Bare Naked Ladies as much as I loved their first four or five albums. Um, my decrease in their in appreciation of them coincided with the departure of Stephen Page, but it wasn't necessarily related to the departure of Stephen Page. Just It's just a coincidence. But um, still, you know, they've still got the, the songwriting chops, the instrumentals, the vocals, and the lyrical stuff is just is still right there. They're still going strong in that department, and uh, that's why I continue to buy all of their albums. And uh, yes, In Flight is no exception. A fantastic pop album from 2023. Now, my number one favorite album of 2023 is thanks in big part to my little brother Noah, my very, very, very close friend Noah. Uh, don't know what my life would be without him. Love you, Noah. Just got to say. And uh, this artist, uh, he turned me on to this artist, and uh, I kind of, you know, I just took off on my my own individual fandom of his. Not as much of a fan of him as he is, as Noah is, but still, uh, Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness, uh, his latest album, uh, Tilt at the Window More, is my favorite album of 2023. 
the fact that this is absolutely dripping with 80s influences, you know, synths and stuff like that, synth pop is uh, is one big reason why it's a hit with me. But just uh, a lot of great songs on here. I actually can't remember a whole lot of them uh, off the top of my head. Uh, Lying on the Hood of Your Car, the opening track is fantastic. Skywriting is excellent. And uh, Nobody Tells You When You're Young. That's a song that pretty much anybody can relate to, even an old guy like me. And, uh, but yes, um, just so many, so many good songs on here. And um, Noel was actually not quite as fond of this album as he was of his previous albums, and I think I know why. I think the lyrics on this album are not quite as personal as they have been on his previous albums, and in a way, that's what I like more about this album. Uh, go figure. But uh, yes, still fantastic album. If you have not checked this album out, give it a shot. Tilt at the Wind No More by Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness is my number one favorite album of 2023. What do you think of that list? A little controversy on some of those, but uh, I thought it was a pretty solid year for music, as much music as I was able to get myself to listen to. Uh, so yes, maybe 2024 will be better in that department. Maybe my listening tastes will shift away and my channel will uh, evolve a little bit to be a little bit different as a result. We will see come December-ish uh, if I will have enough material for a favorite albums of the year list for 2024. But uh, for now, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.